by Indians White Sox at 8. All on MLB Network's Thursday Penn and Chase Baseball. It is time for History Highway presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield Medicare. After 46 years in the booth, one of the most recognizable voices in all the game is calling it a career. And this afternoon, Reds Hall of Fame broadcaster Marty Brenneman will call the final game of his brilliant career. Brenneman touched the lives of many, including our very own Matt Vaskersen, who reflects on what Brenneman meant to him, both personally and professionally. This is awesome. All right, this is the Brenneman letter. We are ready to go in here and rolling. Cool, here we go. Dear Marty, as you approach the end of your Hall of Fame run in the Reds radio booth, I wanted to get behind a microphone myself to tell you why you'll be so missed and what you've meant to me. In 1991, I started my play-by-play -play career in Class A Huntington, West Virginia, a place where the Reds have always been popular, as you know. But back then, in the afterglow of the previous season's World Series title, the Appalachians were decidedly Reds country. I arrived in Huntington having never heard a major league game outside of my native California, where I held the likes of Vin Scully, Jerry Coleman, and particularly Bill King in the highest regard. But it was on the very first time that I stumbled into you working with Joe Nuxall on a rainy April night on WLW that I knew, for me, you were the voice that would define the way a broadcast should sound. It was somewhere in between a story about an Elvis statue, a Hal Morris homer, and the best soil for a tomato garden that I knew I was hooked. Listening to Red's radio made me feel like I was a friend. And the longer I listened, the more I felt I was in on the gags and quips that became a part of the experience. It was like going to a Friars Club dinner with live VP on the other side of the curtain. Years later, as a rookie Brewers broadcaster, I disregarded the long-standing advice to never meet your heroes and decided to pop into your booth at Old Riverfront Stadium to say hello. You turned around and greeted me with a smile and a handshake. I'm all right, you? Yet all the while, I couldn't help but notice Nuxall fast asleep with his head propped up on the side of the wall. You asked me how I was handling the cold weather in Milwaukee, when on cue, Nuxie woke up to say, Milwaukee, put another log on the fire before immediately returning to the same sleeping position he'd been in a moment earlier. Don't mind Joe, you said. He doesn't get started until the middle innings. Throughout the years, I can say for certain that no veteran broadcaster was ever more gracious or downright fun to be around. It was your voice that put generations of Cincinnati fans to bed by stating simply, this one belongs to the Reds. You had a pretty good run, Marty. Hank 714th on your first day on the job. Henry Aaron has just tied Babe Ruth's home run record. From the big red machine to the nasty boys, you were there for every big moment. It's got to be the biggest thrill of your career. It is, Mark. <laughs> I'm so excited. Hit number 4192. Bob Seaver has pitched his first major league no hitter. And the 1990 World Championship belongs to the Cincinnati Reds. You irritated fans from St. Louis to Chicago, and even let a few players know when you'd had enough with their infamous, I was here when you got here and I'll be here after you're gone line. I don't think you ever really knew how right you were about that, because for those of us upon whom you've had an impact, you'll never really be gone. Thanks, Marty, for showing me how to do it. Matt. How great is that, huh? Uh, that is an excellent job by our Matt Vesgersian. Yeah. It, it, it just kind of, it sums it up. Sentimental right? Matty. But that's, <laughs> yes, that's, that's the that true Matt Vesgersian, not the cranky oh, guy great. you see on Hot yeah. Stuff. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Marty Brenneman joins us now from Cincinnati, where he will be broadcasting his final game as the Reds host the Brewers. It's a game most of you will see here on the network. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to give you the Reds feed. And then we're going to also give you the Reds radio broadcast so that everyone can hear Marty's call. And Marty is good enough to join us. Marty, uh, congratulations. Tell me, what are you feeling right now 
minutes before your last game? Uh, it's going to be a tough day for me, Robert. And I knew this months and months and months ago when I made the announcement in January that this was going to be it. I've chosen not to spend a lot of time thinking about it. I got in the car this morning to drive down to the ballpark, and I got a call from Joe Girardi that brought me to tears. Um, uh, it's it's going to be a surreal day for me. It's a day that I know I've had to come to grips with for a long time. But, you know, as I told you guys earlier this season, when I was in your studios, 46 years is long enough. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like I've got another life to live, and that life is going to be a, enriching as, as, as much as this 46-year run in Cincinnati has been for me. Marty, it's Ken Rosenthal. Congratulations. You're a hero to so Thanks, many of Ken. us. I wanted to ask you, I've never asked you this in person, but I want to ask it to you right now. You have, through the years, been honest, at times painfully honest, talking about the Reds at a time when it is extremely rare for a team's broadcaster to be critical of his team. What was your philosophy, and how difficult was it at times to go about it that way? Well, that's a good question because, you know, the road that I chose to take was is the road of most resistance. Uh, I think everybody has an inherent need to be liked. And I know that over the years, a number of Reds players that came through this franchise and went on to somewhere else or went on into retirement, uh, they don't say nice things about me. And I understand that. And I, I can live with that and have lived with it for a long time. But I think if I don't have anything else when I walk away today, I feel like I've got credibility. And, and credibility is the most important thing to me. I don't think I'd have been around here for 46 years if I didn't have some measure of credibility. And so, um, you know, I, I look back, I have friends. If I ever write a book, and I don't know that I will, but if I do, I'll have a chapter of my favorite players, and they will be guys. A lot of them were not great players, but they will be fellows who understood. I never, ever had a personal vendetta against any player. Uh, and I used to tell guys, if I'm going to praise you when you play well, I have reserved the right to be critical when you don't. Mm -hmm. And I feel privileged to be able to have, have, have approached my job the way I have. I want, I want to ask you about that chapter, Marty. I mean, favorite team, favorite player. Do you, is anything you woke up this morning, you're driving, anything come to mind? Your favorite season, a guy like you said, that, guys that you will write about? My favorite season was the 1990 season. Uh, the team with, with Barry Larkin and Eric yeah. Davis and the Nasty Boys and Tom Browning and Danny Jackson. It, it was a team that had the greatest chemistry of any team I've ever been associated with, and it transcended everything. Uh, whether you were white, African-American, Hispanic, everybody got along well with everybody. And, and you know, it, it had been 14 years since the Reds had won a world championship. Uh, I didn't know any better in 75 and 76. I had no reason to compare that team with any other team. But the 90 club was not given a chance by anybody uh, to finish first, much less win a world championship. Uh, that's my favorite ball club. Marty, 46-year career. You know, so many of us look up to you. You saw Matty V just uh, speak volumes of yep. you. You know, what would you say is the one constant, right, the, the key to your longevity and to be just uh, so successful in what you've done? Boy, I don't know. That that's a that's a tough question. I um, I, I don't know. I, I the thing I've tried to do is be nice to people, uh, to make time for young broadcasters that were trying to uh, hopefully get to where myself and a lot of other guys have gotten to over all these years. Um, I think it's easy to be nice to people. I think I learned that from my mom and dad. And I don't I don't care how high a level of celebrity that you reach. It's awfully nice to be, uh, it's awfully easy to be nice to people. And uh, I'm visible in this community. It's the most provincial city I've ever lived in. And so I don't think you can come in here and do a season and then turn around and leave and go somewhere else where the weather's warmer and then come back in on opening day and begin a season all over again. I'm visible in grocery stores. Um, I'm out and about in the community. And I think a lot of that has had to do with the fact that I've embraced this town. But more important than that, this town has embraced me since 1974. Uh, everything I've, I've succeeded, I owe the people who have religiously turned on the radio night after night after night and, and listened to our broadcast because without their support, and I, this is a heartfelt and, and honest to God fact, I, I'd, I'd not be sitting here today celebrating 46 years of broadcasting Reds baseball.
Marty, when you're finished today, who will you think of first? Oh, boy, now you're going to get me all emotional. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, there's so many people that have been important to me, and um, I, I think probably the two people I think about are my mom and dad, who have been gone for a long time because – both of them, my mother was around to see me going to the broadcaster's wing in 2000. My dad passed away in 1992 listening to me do an NCAA regional game uh, out of Charlotte. Um, I, I would think of those two, and I, I think, and, and but also to join that group would be the guy that I work with for 31 years, and that's Joe Nuxall. Mm. Um, we had such an incredible relationship, and the longer it went, the closer we got, and I learned so much from him. Um, there's hardly a day that goes by in the baseball season that I don't think about him and, and the advice that he gave me. And he, next to my family and, and uh, my extended family, there's no one more important in my life, I don't imagine, than Joe Nuxall was. All right, Marty, I can't imagine nervous stomach, 46 seasons <laughs> coming to an end. Were you even able to eat breakfast this morning? Oh yeah, we had a, we had the last supper this morning <laughs> with all the broadcasters, and we had pictures taken, and uh, uh, they're pictures that I'll cherish for all time. Uh, I certainly want to single out Matty for the yeah. the peace that I got that from great, him. I called it? him yesterday. Yeah, well, that rendered me to tears too, and uh, I called him and thanked him, and and uh, that that was just very very special for me, and I hope he realizes it after the fact. Well, Marty, it, I know it's going to be a special day. It's going to be a tough day. Um, but we're, we're yeah. glad that we're able to, here at the network, bring it to, to most of the country. Uh, congratulations on a great career. And you go live that life that you said yeah, that you've got right. some living to do after <laughs> this is all over. Enjoy it, my man. <laughs> hey, thanks, fellas. Enjoyed being with you. Thank you very much. Congrats, Congrats Marty. Marty. Go get him, man. He, it's, it's, he's the soundtrack of so many people's uh, summers, right? Yeah. He's got me emotional. Well, I'll say this, and it goes back to Matt's piece about him. And it goes back to something Marty said in our interview about being kind to young broadcasters. Now, in our business, I'm not really a broadcaster writer. When someone of that caliber is nice to a younger person, what it means to that person is undefinable. You yeah. can't even measure it. it it's just... Huge, and Matt spoke to it in his piece, and it was beautiful. And Marty has lived that, and I've heard this story from others too. How kind he was to folks, and yeah, he might have ripped players, but that in his mind was his job. But it's how you treat your peers and the people who want to be you. He was yeah. first class, a Hall of Fame career. Uh, you got to, you got to pull it together. I know. You know. I know. You want me to, to, to hold no, on? No, I, I think I'm hold good. Hold on. Did you, I think are I'm are good. you tight with Marty Brennan? No, but just hearing him talk, it just it gets me. It gets me going. Zero. Come on. I don't man. need. No, I'm in. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this, and Carlos Pena can attest to this. Outside of the players, there's certain. And Ken, you got this kind of cachet, whether you like to admit it or not. There's mm -hmm. certain people when you're walking, when no one's in the stadium, like two in the afternoon, or after everyone's gone, you're walking through the concourses to the buses where you're like, "Oh, that's Marty Brenneman," or "Ooh, Ken Rosenthal's writing a piece." Yeah. I'm not. I'm serious. Peter Gammons when he first Gammons, started walking, yes. you, you've earned that respect. It's like too. whoa, you've like kind of the the fabric of the game kind of hits you in the face yeah. with some of these guys. Well, that I, guy, he big was time. big time. So we're gonna have that game for you, 12:30 Eastern. We're gonna, of course, bring you the video feed, but we're bringing the radio, the Reds radio yeah, that's cool. broadcast. That's cool. So that's gonna be a special treat as Marty Brenneman closes his Hall of Fame career, 12:30 Eastern. On MLB Network, there's a look at the booth where he'll be conducting business for the final time. Brewers Reds, 1230 Eastern. We're back at the end.